On the File tab, in every EasyCam product, you have the ability to record your screen. We create an AVI file that can be uploaded to the EasyCam cloud for better communication with support. Next to it, we have the Easy Web Tools. Here, you can back up all of your personal preferences. This is valuable if you have a computer crash, if you want to work on another computer, or if there are multiple users that want to work in their own environment. Also can be backed up as your welcome screen with all of your recently saved files. If you do not want the file saved to the EasyCam Cloud, just right click and remove from the startup window. We back up all of your post processors, all tool libraries, any custom toolbars, and of course the EasyCam environment. To participate, all you do is add a user, provide your email address, and create a password. Then you can upload your last part to be downloaded later. You can back up the entire environment, which is the welcome screen, the post processors, toolbars, and so on, and go back and restore them on your computer or any other. EasyCam requires less skill in our latest version. Now, in our 2D wizards, you simply select surfaces without the need for curves, as I will demonstrate on this solid model. First, I'm going to machine the stock up to the part boundary. The wizards are pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to discuss them here. EasyCam offers more toolpath options in our work steps. Using Select Cut Surfaces and applying our Smart Click, you select one surface and EasyCam change them all in order to give us our complete boundary. You can select individual surfaces by using the Shift key to toggle Smart Click on and off. We'll verify our toolpath. Now we'll machine around the bosses. The key to avoid machining the bosses off completely is to select the bottom surface. We'll machine our holes. With Smart Click, you select one hole, and EasyCam will find all the holes of the same diameter, start height, and depth. Now for our through pockets. Select the vertical walls. Add our top pockets. I'm going to use high speed machining. Select the bottom of the pocket so EasyCam will extract the boundary and the depth. We'll add our center contour. And finally, our chamfer. I'll change the tool number. The diameter can stay. And the remaining fields will be populated based on the selected surfaces. A 
final verification. And this project is complete. In all milling products, including our turn mill, we have feature and surface detection. First, you're going to preview. And if you notice in the list box, it shows you your operations. Right now, drill half inch is highlighted. If I select the vertical wall for my through pockets, that work step gets highlighted. This is beneficial if you are clicking on a crash or if you want to make some feature adjustments. But if you want to know more information about a feature, you can go to the post menu, stock setup. On the lower right hand side, you're going to notice the detection type. I'm going to select features, preview again. I will select the hole and you'll notice I get the depth and the diameter. If I select our chamfer, we get the chamfer angle. So let's look at our surface detection. Select the bottom of a pocket, and it gives us our Z-plane, which is based off of our coordinate system. Select the corner, and we get the fillet radius. And this works for any surfaces selected. Popular Easy Mill Express Wizards have been added to Easy Mill and Easy Mill Pro. You'll find a new drop down menu containing advanced features. All you need to do is select the one you want and EasyCam automatically adjusts your toolpath. Let's start with the single pass. EasyCam cuts along your machining boundary once. Multiple pass. You're going to specify an offset to your machining boundary by the total stock. You will cut up to the boundary by the cut step. Z connect. You're going to specify a Z step where the tool feeds from the top of the boundary down a quarter of an inch, cuts across, down another quarter, cuts back, and continues in a zigzag type of fashion until it reaches full depth. I selected the surface on the left hand side of the model. Now for our 3D curve. Your curve will be draped on top of a surface or surfaces. The offset direction is typically off. That way the tool is centered over the curve for a type of engraving. I've selected the bottom of the pocket with the islands. Down below you have your cycle type. I'll start us off with a pocket, standard tool path. Cycle type will be zigzag. And you can set any angle under advance. It does not have to be left to right. It could be top to bottom, for example. And we have our high speed machining where the tool arcs into the corner, giving it a nice even chip load. Makes your cutter last longer. Then we have a helical style tool path where you can spiral in or spiral out. You can see there's a continuous motion inside the pocket. Then we have our facing work step. It has all of the same features as the pocketing work step. 
The only difference being is the tool over travels the outside boundary. Here I will discuss saving, deleting, and renaming rules in the Curve Machining Wizard. I'll start with feature recognition. Double click your pocket boundary curve. At the top of the wizard, you'll notice the curve name. For category, I'm going to choose pockets. The method will be type 2 for my approach. Three work steps were automatically loaded. These are my personal preferences as to how I would machine a pocket. Down below is information for each work step, such as pocketing, where we leave material on the walls and the pocket floor. The other two work steps are finish operations. I'm going to make a rule. Anytime a curve starts with P1 in its name, we will apply these work steps instantly. So I'm just going to delete the existing curves to demonstrate. We'll create a face curve, name it P1, select the bottom of a pocket, and in a couple of clicks you have these three work steps. If I want, I can rename the rule. For my next pocket, we'll call this EZ. And rule EZ was applied. And you can also delete rules. Now that you've programmed your part, let's talk about G-Code. Here is a list of recently used post processors, but if a post is not needed, it can be removed from the list to avoid sorting through machine files. With the new Remove CNC button, there is no need to go through the process of editing the INI file. What about unwanted work steps? Rather than editing in the Work Step Manager, you can delete operations right out of the list box. Simply select your work step, right click, and delete becomes available. For mass editing, standard window functions apply, such as click and drag, pressing the shift key, and for random selections you can use the control key. Let's look at die profile and hole recognition on this complex 3D part. I'm going to position our coordinate system using world on model. We'll select the bottom, lower left, and we'll write the length and width to the stock settings for 3D preview. Now we'll go to the curve tab and use die profile recognition. Our profiling curves use the color red. Now for hole recognition, holes are colored blue, and you can notice that some of them are connected together. That means they have the same diameter. Now all curves require a start and end. You can do that manually or automatically. I'm going to choose a die. We'll machine in a counterclockwise direction, and our start and end distance will be 0.4. You can see that holes start in the center, and our die profile uses 0.4. Now we'll move on to machining and create a new die. Thickness will be 8.7. 
we'll take multiple passes go to the technology table and you, here you can see you can set the feed rate the water comp register and comp value and you can do that for each pass the wire diameter now it's asking me to select the curves that are going to be included in that work step I'm going to put a window around our part and we'll verify then a 3D preview Here we're going to talk about a new die method. I created a work step for us. Under our strategy, you'll see we've added S8. This is going to take a roughing pass with a stop, then we'll cut off, followed by our finished passes based on the remaining land cuts. I set our land cut for three. In the technology table, you'll see we have our rough and our two finishes where you can adjust the feed, water, comp register, and comp value. Let's take a look at our path. You can see we have a stop with a cutoff. Let's look at the G code. And you can see we've added a hard stop. Now in a 3D preview, Here is our roughing pass with a stop followed by a cutoff. Now we'll take the remaining two finished passes.